Good morning, all. Here's a fun circuit that you can breadboard and experiment with. It's centered around this IC MC14516BCP or the MC14510BCP. The pinouts are identical for each IC. The differences are that the 4516 is a presettable binary up down counter and the 4510 is a presettable binary coded decimal up down counter. Now the clock source for the input of either IC is on pin 15 and I have an NE555N configured in a stable mode of operation generating a square wave into pin 15. The square wave output of the 555 is on pin 3. Now the frequency of that clock output is based upon R1, R2, and C1. R1 and R2 are 20 kilo ohms and C1 is 22 microfarad. And that generates a square wave output on pin 3 of a hair over 1 hertz. Now we want a slow frequency so that we can see the state changes on the LEDs. The outputs of both these up down counter ICs Q4 on pin 2, Q3 on pin 14, Q2 on pin 11, and Q1 on pin 6. They drive into an open collector output inverter and that's SN7405N. You want open collector so that you can pull current through that LED at the output of these inverters. So uh, I have pin 2, Q4, driving into pin 1. So when Q4 is high, Pin 2 on the inverter is low and we have current flow through the 220 ohm current limiting resistor. We have to have that in there so we don't burn up that LED and this open collector output. So we have current flow through the resistor, through the anode cathode junction, into pin 2 and ground. And that allows photons to be emitted from that LED. Now the pins that I'm not using are preset enable, reset, carry in bar, preset 4, preset 3, preset 2, preset 1, and pin 8 is ground. So I tie those unused pins to ground. You can apply any value to the presets and an and uh, strobe it into the counter with preset enable. So let's say I wanted to start counting at uh, a binary 5. I would go 0, 1, 0, 1 and then load it into the counter with the preset enable. That's a switch input. And once you have that preload in, you can start counting from a, a binary 5. But I'm not using that function so I got that tied to ground. Now the carry in and down here on pin 7 we have a carry out. What that does is it allows you to daisy chain these counters. So in our instance we only have four bits that we can count up to. If I wanted to count 8 bits or 32 bits for instance you would have the carry out go to the carry in of the next stage and that would give you additional bits by using multiple counters now I am using 
the up and down. When that's on pin 10. When this switch is open, 5 volts is applied to pin 10 through this 1 kilo ohm pull up resistor. And we have a logic high. And we count up 0 to 9 if we're BCD, or 0 to 15 if we are uh, binary counting. When I close that switch, we count down. We, we count backwards. We count from 15 to 0 or 9 to 0 if we're binary or BCD. So this switch right here, I'm just using a wire. <laughs> I, I tie the wire to ground. That's my switch. <laughs> so let's look at the circuit in action. And then we'll look at the waveforms here on this IC and on this IC with the oscilloscope. I've dimmed the lights so we can see the LEDs turn on and off. I'm applying 5 volts to VCC and ground of the circuit. There's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, 0. Isn't that fascinating? Let's watch that for a little bit, and then we'll swap in the 4510, and we'll watch it count binary coded decimal. Let's go ahead and swap in that 4510 and you'll see the difference in counting. I've turned off the power. Get my close-up glasses on. We'll swap this guy out. Alright, out comes the 4516 and in goes the 4510. There's my little up down switch. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You see the difference? Binary coded decimal are the values from 0 to 9. And these, uh, these are used with 7 segment displays. There's an IC and it takes binary coded decimal and converts it to 7 segment display. So that you can, on that display, that one digit display, you can display the numbers 0 through 9. And that would be the ones. And if you carried out into another counter, that would be your tens digit. So you could have two digits. And if you had another 4510, you could have a three digit counter. So you would, your ones would be zero to nine, then you would carry into the tens and that would be 0 to 9, and then you would carry into the hundreds, and that would be 0 to 9. Well, isn't that fascinating? <laughs> if I had a bigger breadboard, I could have uh, 8 LEDs out there. Well, now let's go the other way. We're counting up 
let's go ahead and close our switch to ground. This is our up-down counter. Zero, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Eight, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Let's go back up. Alright, now let's look at some waveforms. I'll fire up my oscilloscope and we're going to look at the waveforms of the 555. And we can look at the waveforms of the 4510. Now I've changed the capacitance C1 on the NE555 from 22 microfarad to one microfarad so that we speed up the frequency. Now let's look at the output pin 3. Spread that time out a little bit. There we go. Now this is the clock output going into pin 15 of the 4510. This is pin 3 on the NE555N. Now you can see that it's not quite 50% um, duty cycle. It's more high than low, but that's okay. That's all that 4510 or that 4516 need is that high to low going square wave. That's pin 3. Let's look at pin 2 and 6. We have, let me bring that time in a little bit. You see there's a sawtooth. Now let me go back down to 5 volts per division. You can see that the sawtooth rides from one-third of 5 volts to two-thirds of 5 volts. That's your discharge window, your charge and discharge window. Let's go look at pin 7. Get on there. I'm in the dark over here. I turned the lights off so we could see the LEDs turn on and off. But there's pin 7. Isn't that something? Okay, now let's take a look at some of the waveforms on the uh, 4510. Here's Q4, I have to bring the time in a little bit. It's Q4 output. <laughs> Marches right along, doesn't it? Okay, let's go look at pin 14. Pin 14 is Q3. We'll look at pin 11, if I can get on it here in the dark. It's Q2. All right, now pin six is Q1. Notice how the least significant bit 
is at a higher frequency than the most significant bit. And here is the clock input. Spread that time out a little bit. There's the clock input from the NE555N pin 3. That's fascinating. <laughs> fascinating. Okay, folks, I hope you're having a good day. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the time with your families. And we'll see you next time. Taking out the one microfarad capacitor and installing the 22 microfarad capacitor. There we go. Notice with the larger capacitor, the slower the frequency. There we go. <laughs> Y'all build that. Build that little circuit. You'll enjoy that. <laughs>